Welcome to Fax TV News, where everything is true. Family classmates got at the death of five-year-old killed by a gunman in St. James. His classmates were greeted with an empty deck, a teddy bear, and a folder with his picture. But five-year-old Tafoy Cummins was not at his usual seat at the top link on early childhood school in Greenshaw, Westmoreland, on Monday afternoon. Cummins was one of two persons gone down at a funeral in John's Hall, St. James, on Sunday. Tavoy was shot in the back. The other deceased is 26-year-old Simon Shaw, otherwise called Iris, a laborer of John's Hall. Tavoy Tavoy, his classmates call, as they crowded around his desk unsure of what tragedy had struck. Cummins' death came mere days after several schools and stakeholders hosted a march to end violence against the nation's children. The initiative held on Friday in Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland, was dubbed Stop the Silence and the Violence. Principal of the institution, Yvette Daniels, told reporters that the school is in mourning. All of us, we are feeling sad. We're feeling shaken that one of our students is gone, the distraught educator said. I asked them the children questions, how they're feeling, and where they think Tavoy is, and they were telling us some of the things they remember, how we used to dance, and how we used to climb the monkey bar, Daniels recall. Reports from the Freeport Police are that about 2 p.m., four people, including Cummins, boarded a motor vehicle at a funeral in John's Hall when they were pounced upon by armed men who opened gunfire at the vehicle. When the shooting subsided, three of the occupants were seen with gunshot wounds. The police were summoned, and the three injured people were taken to hospital. Shaw and Cummins were pronounced dead. The other person, Cummins' father, is being treated in hospital. Meanwhile, Cummins' counsel, who identified herself as Dina, said the family is not coping. Nobody no gonna work today, we we out. I am father whole life. It's like them take him whole life, a distraught Tina reported. Tina added that reality struck when she realized that her little cousin would not be coming back home. Me cry till me blows wet. When me go go over the hospital, I me realize we are come home and him not come home. Me weep, me weak, she added, as she fought to contain the tears. He's a nice, jovial little boy. There's never a dull moment around him. If you tell him to sing, him sing. If you tell him to dance, him dance, Tina said in a somber tone. Tina shared how young Cummins would often help his grandmother, whose foot is amputated, with any small errands such as going to the corner shop for her. As for his grandfather, John Sterling, he expressed anger at his daughter attending the funeral with young Cummins. Sterling told reporters that his daughter was one as news had reported the spread that the funeral would be shut up. Me can't believe. I know me can't eat no food. The little boy, I want nice little boy. He's a good little boy. His grandfather stressed. Wrong place, wrong time, says Jay Blem of arrest in Florida. Dancehall artist Jay Blem believes he will ultimately be exonerated when he heads back to the U.S. court on December 5th to answer to charges of possession of marijuana with intent to distribute possession of MDMA, and possession of paraphernalia. The 19-year-old was among six men arrested by Bay County Sheriff's deputies and U.S. Marshal Stats Force last week in Panama City, Florida. The emerging entertainer, whose real name is Jaim Cox, believes that bad luck played a major role in his arrest. It was just a case of wrong place, wrong time. Men never do nothing wrong. The truth will come out in the end. God a God, he told reporters. On Sunday, J. Blem released a single titled Got a lead, which has raked up almost 40,000 views so far since its release. The song recorded a few hours after he was granted bail on drug charges, addresses his feelings of betrayal on social media users, spread rumors about the nature of his arrest, and even appeared to celebrate his downfall. When we did in a lockup, it kind of shaped me up to know so your own people will throw you under the bus, and I'm not even really with you when things look bleaky. This just teach me if he keep me circle small and keep people loyal around me, he said. He is the son of veteran artist Danny English. Right now, me I go and listen to my father. He must show me for what certain pre and be more careful on the road, so God will lead out the way now, he said. Jay Blem, a former star athlete for Kingston College, emerged on the music scene in 2018, but had his major breakthrough last year with his single account. He has continued to chart out his hit like Work for the Dolly, Martino, and Rocket. Reports were that the U.S. Marshal Service tracked down wanted men, Anika Green, from New York to a residence in Panama City, Florida. When the search was finished, six men inside Green's condominium 
including Cox, were arrested after officials allegedly found several hundred grams of marijuana, MDMD pill, and more than U.S. $23,000 in cash. The other men arrested were Shamar Wilderburn, 22, Renata Campbell, 22, Shamari Livingston, 22, and Kevoy Taylor, 19. SSP Wayne Cameron returned as chairman of POA. Senior Superintendent of Police Wayne Cameron was returned as chairman of the Police Officers Association. The decision was made during the POA's annual general meeting last Thursday. New members were also elected during the meeting. They include Vice Chairman Deputy Superintendent of Police St. George Jackson, Member Superintendent of Police Aaron Samuels, and Superintendent of Police Richard Hilton. Meanwhile, Senior Superintendent of Police Marjorie Jones Williams and Senior Superintendent of Police Christopher Fields were retained as Secretary Treasurer and Assistant Secretary Treasurer, respectively. Following his reinstatement, SSP Cameron said this year's general meeting was the best attended in recent times and used the opportunity to honor some of the nation's best servicemen and women. This year's AGM was the most largely attended AGM in the POA's history with over 200 attendees and the first time where all members of the chaplaincy were in attendance as well as the first ever AGM with many detectives in attendance, he said, before leading his team into the recognition ceremony. Among the officers honored were the first one motorcyclist in the JCF history, Andy Ramsey Nelson, Superintendent of Police Retired, the first female Deputy Commissioner of Police, and third female Assistant Commissioner of Police, Javine Bent, Deputy Commissioner of Police Retired, the fifth female Assistant Commissioner of Police, Melissa Stoll Thompson, Assistant Commissioner of Police Retired, the first female Chairman of the POA, fourth female Assistant Commissioner of Police, and the second female Deputy Commissioner of Police, Novelette Grant, Deputy Commissioner of Police Retired. The first member of the Island Specialized Co Constabulary Force, Commandant of the ISCF, Osman Bromfield, Commandant Island Special Constabulary Force. According to a release on Monday, recognition was also given to stalwarts of the POE, who served as chairman including Charles Simpson, Senior Superintendent of Police Retired, Michael James, Senior Superintendent of Police Retired, Leon Rose, Assistant Commissioner of Police Retired, Glenford Hudson, Assistant Commissioner of Police Retired, and Norman Heyman, Assistant Commissioner of Police Retired. Reverend Courtney Walters, retired chaplain, was also honored for his commitment to the POA over his years of service. The chairman also used the meeting to invite attendees to pay tribute to colleagues and loved ones who died in the line of duty, including the late Superintendent Leon Clonis. Clonis was one of four cops who were shot during a police operation in Horizon Park, Spanish Town, St. Catherine, on June 12, 2020. This year's general meeting was held under the theme, promoting the health, wealth, and wellness of the force for good. Chairman Cameron informed the AGM that the team was carefully selected and crafted based on some observations made, including many instances where officers proceed into retirement not in good health and worse, not in good financial standing, as well as officers were dying within one to five years of retirement. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.